Good evening. Tonight is Monday Thursday service, but before we begin, in true Methodist fashion, just a few notices. I hope that you have enjoyed sharing in the morning prayers and the evening services during Holy Week. Good Friday tomorrow from nine o'clock, the Holy Week service will be led by Reverend Sam for 15, 20 minutes. And then in the evening, there will be a continuation of this Holy Week service, and that will be going out at seven o'clock. On Holy Saturday, there will be our morning prayers at nine o'clock. And then on Easter day, we will join together as a circuit to celebrate. We cannot share communion uh, virtually, but we hope we might find a way to share together on Easter day and more about that perhaps tomorrow. But tonight there is an opportunity to share in a love feast and I hope that you will be able to join with us. So continue to hold fast, stay safe and be strong in the Lord. Amen. Welcome once again to our Holy Week services. Today is Monday, Thursday and Myrtle and I invite you to come and sit at our table with us, just as Jesus sat at the table with his disciples. So whether wherever you are, if you're around your own table or in a chair, I hope that as we shared last night and through WhatsApp today, that you've managed to find yourself a drink, got some thing to nibble and eat, because we're not sharing communion tonight, but we are going to be in communion with each other. We're sharing what the Methodist people have called a love feast, an opportunity for us to eat and drink together in Jesus Christ. So welcome. Jesus is here among us. Yesu tawa pano, Yesu tawa pano, Yesu tawa pano. Tower Panomazita Rain, Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. Jesus, we are here. We are here for you, Jesu Yesu tawa pano, Yesu tawa pano, Yesu tawa pano, tawa pano, mesita renu. Let us pray together. Gracious and loving God, we acknowledge your presence in our midst. We come gathered round our tables to share with you, as you shared with your disciples so long ago, in a meal, in preparation for all that was to come. We come sh gathered round tables to share together in the, all that is happening amongst us. We come to you, O oh God, for you are the great God. You are the one who expressed such love through your actions of this week. We come to reflect on those actions as we share in love with one another. So gracious and loving God, be in the midst of all that we do. Show us your presence through our care and love for one another. So Lord, we offer to you this our time of gathering and sharing together in the precious name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Saviour. Amen. Amen. We're going to continue following the story as told by Matthew. If you have a Bible, we'll be looking at various passages in Matthew chapter 26. We're going to begin looking at verse 17. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked him, Where do you want us to get the Passover meal ready for you? Go to a certain man in the city, he said to them, and tell him, The teacher says, My hour has come, my disciples and I will celebrate the Passover at your house. 
The disciples did as Jesus had told them and prepared the Passover meal. When it was evening, Jesus and the twelve disciples sat down to eat. During the meal, Jesus said, I tell you, one of you will betray me. The disciples were very upset and began to ask him, one after the other, Surely, Lord, you don't mean me. Jesus answered, One who dips his bread in the dish with me will betray me. The Son of Man will die as a scripture say. He will. But how terrible for that man who betrays a Son of Man. It would have been better for that man if he had never been born. Judas the traitor spoke up. Surely, teacher, you don't mean me, he asked. Jesus answered, so you say. Just look around the table and look at Jesus and the disciples, Peter, James, John, Andrew, Bartholomew, Thomas, all of them there. And Jesus saying that one of them will betray him. And even today, as followers of Jesus, we can often fall into temptation and betray our Lord. Let's pray together. In the quietness, let us bring before God moments in our life, and particularly recently, when we have betrayed that we have been followers of Jesus Christ when we have not spoken the truth, when we have not stood up for justice, when we have not used our gifts to help others. When we have allowed on our lips things that have denied our love of Jesus Christ. Gracious God, on this most holy night, the night in which you were betrayed, forgive our sins. And if we have betrayed or denied you, forgive us and renew us, we pray. In Jesus' name. Amen. At the Passover, because of their faith, they would have shared a particular psalm and the psalm is what we call psalm 116 it's at the back of singing the faith which is number 828 in the hymn book or you might want to follow it in your own bible if you have the uh, singing the faith then myrtle will say the words in light print and i will respond in the words of dark print you can follow either one of us psalm 116 I love the Lord, for he has heard the voice of my supplication. Because he has inclined his ear to me on the day called, I called to him. The snares of death encompassed me. The pains of hell took hold of me. By grief and sorrow was I held. Then I called upon the name of the Lord. O Lord, I beg you, deliver my soul. Gracious is the Lord and righteous. Our God is full of compassion. The Lord watches over the simple. I was brought very low, and he saved me. Turn again to your rest, O my soul, for the Lord has been gracious to you. For you have delivered my soul from death, my eyes from tears, and my feet from falling. I will walk before the Lord in the land of the living. I believed that I should perish, for I was sorely troubled. And I said in my alarm, everyone is a liar. How shall I repay the Lord for all the benefits he has given me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. O Lord, oh. I am your servant, your servant, the child of your handmaid. You have freed me from my bonds. I will offer to you a sacrifice of thanksgiving and call upon the name of the Lord. I will fulfil my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people, in the, the courts, courts of, of the house, house of the Lord, Lord in, in the, the midst, midst of, of your of Jerusalem. Jerusalem. Alleluia. Alleluia. Matthew, Mark and Luke go then straight into the sharing of those words of communion. But John's gospel is so very different. 
and a number of verses are a number of chapters are, are all about this last supper john chapter 13 is a very special story and you might like to turn to it as myrtle reads the first 15 verses often when it's being read on monday thursday we wash one another's feet we can't do that tonight but let us hear the word of the lord it was now the day before the passover festival jesus knew that the hour had come for him to leave this world and go to the father he'd always loved those in the world who were his own and he loved them to the very end jesus and his disciples were at supper the devil had already put into the heart of judas the son of simon iscariot the thought of betraying Jesus. Jesus knew that the Father had given him complete power. He knew that he had come from God and was going to God. So he rose from the table, took off his outer garment and tied a towel round his waist. Then he poured some water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and dry them with the towel round his waist. He came to Simon Peter who said to him, Are you going to wash my feet, Lord? Jesus answered him, You do not understand now what I am doing, but you will understand later. Peter declared, Never at any time will you wash my feet. If I do not wash your feet, Jesus answered, you will no longer be my disciple. Simon Peter answered, Lord, do not wash only my feet then, wash my hands and head too. Jesus said, Those who have had a bath are completely clean and do not have to wash themselves except for their feet. All of you are clean, all except one. Jesus already knew who was going to betray him. That is why he said, all of you except one are clean. After Jesus had washed their feet, he put his outer garment back on and returned to his place at the table. Do you understand what I've just done to you? He asked. You call me teacher and Lord, and it is right that you do so because that is what I am. I, your Lord and teacher, have just washed your feet. You then should wash one another's feet. I have set an example for you, so that you will do just what I have done for you. Thanks be to God.
We continue the story from Matthew 26, picking it up in verse 26. While they were eating, Jesus took a piece of bread, gave a prayer of thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples. Take and eat it, he said, this is my body. Then he took a cup, gave thanks to God and gave it to them. Drink it, all of you, he said. This is my blood which seals God's covenant, my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will never again drink this wine until the day I drink the new wine with you in my Father's kingdom. Thanks be to God. And these are the words that have been shared by Christians for 2,000 years remembering the night in which our Lord Jesus Christ was betrayed. And through this week, we've been focusing on God's perfect 2020 vision. And here in these few verses, we capture that vision of God for all people, for all time. Jesus and his disciples were celebrating the Passover, the memory of when the angel of death passed over Egypt and through Moses they had been told to put the mark of the blood of an animal of a lamb a perfect lamb upon their doorpost and when the angel of death saw the mark of the blood then death would pass over and here Jesus is telling us that it is his blood not the blood of an animal but the blood of the son of God that was going to offer new life, new hope, new love to all people. And so Jesus says, he says, this is my blood, which seals God's covenant, my blood poured out for many for the forgiveness of sins. Jesus, the Lamb of God, the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, whose vision is that those who follow him and believe in him shall have that relationship with God, that relationship of a father to his children, that renewal of God's original intention that all his creatures and all creation would be in a perfect relationship with him. This is God's vision. It is our vision and it's a vision that can take us through the pain and suffering of Good Friday to the vision of new life with Jesus Christ. Of course, this meal, this communion as we call it, the Last Supper, has become central to the worship of Christians and tonight we're sharing in a love feast that was very much a part of the early Methodist church using simple food, simple drink and sharing fellowship and communion with each other. And so as Myrtle and I have a drink and eat some of the food on our table, we hope that you've got something nearby we can drink. You've got a, a biscuit, some cake, some jollof rice, some curried goat from last night perhaps, whatever it is. Let's just spend a short while sharing food and if you're with other people you can talk to each other. If you're by yourself, no you're not by yourself because we are bound in fellowship with one another. We pray, gracious God, we thank you for this food. We thank you for all your many, many gifts. And at this particular time of this pandemic, we thank you for life. We thank you for your protection. We thank you, O oh God, that you promise that we will come through the valley of the shadow of darkness into the joy of your life. So gracious God, bless this time of fellowship and communion with you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
I hope you found something to eat, something to drink, perhaps you still are. I'm going to read one verse that was the end of this particular part of that night with Jesus. And then I'm going to invite you to join us in a very familiar song. And then we will leave for the Garden of Gethsemane and we invite you to do that. And perhaps as we sing, you might want to dim your lights or even turn your lights off and just sit in the darkness and come with us to Gethsemane. So here the final verse, verse 30 of Matthew 26. Then they sang a hymn and went out to the Mount of Olives. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my will forever be evermore your own. Never let my heart grow cold. Never let me go, Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. Abba Father, let me be yours and yours alone. May my heart forever be evermore your own. Never let my heart grow cold. Never let me go. Then Jesus said to them, This very night all of you will run away and leave me, for the scripture says, God will kill the shepherd, and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I am raised to life, I will go to Galilee ahead of you. Peter spoke up and said to Jesus, I will never leave you, even though all the rest do. Jesus said to Peter, I tell you that before the cock crows tonight, you will say three times that you do not know me. Peter answered, I will never say that, even if I have to die with you. And all the other disciples said the same thing.
Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane and he said to them sit here while I go over there and pray. He took with him Peter and the two sons of Zebedee. Grief and anguish came over him and he said to them the sorrow in my heart is so great that it almost crushes me. Stay here and keep watch. He went a little further on threw himself face downwards on the ground and prayed my father if it is possible take this cup of suffering from me yet not what i want but what you want then he returned to the three disciples and found them asleep and he said to peter how is it that you three were not able to keep watch with me even for one hour keep watch and pray that you will not fall into temptation the spirit is willing but the flesh is weak once more Jesus went away and prayed, My Father, if this cup of suffering cannot be taken away unless I drink it, your will be done. He returned once more and found the disciples asleep, but they could not keep their eyes open. Again Jesus left them, went away and prayed the third time, saying the same words. Then he returned to the disciples and said, are you still sleeping and resting? Look, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be handed over to the power of sinners. Get up, let us go. Look, here is a man who is betraying me.